past and present. Hi everybody, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck, and today I'm going to share with you some of the activities and ways that I have taught themes around past and present with some of my students. I'm kind of going to focus on the younger years when I'm doing this, but these are easily applicable to the older students. So I'm going to be flipping the camera around a couple of times just to show you the resources that I'm sharing with you in a Google folder. And if you want access to it, it'll be in the description below. You need to open this up into YouTube to be able to access it. In that description as well are also my links to social media on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Instagram, if you want to follow me, I've been sharing pictures of the things that I do at school. Most recently, you would be seeing a lot of the stuff that I'm doing with the student environment group as part of the Aspiring Principles project that I've got going. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm just a, a system principal. Uh, I work in the New South Wales public system and I just share stuff. I share uh, my, my tips, my strategies, resources. I don't sell anything. I don't spam anything and I do videos once a week. So if you don't want to miss anything, hit the subscribe button below and um, tap the notification bell if you want it to actually show up in your feed so that you don't miss anything. I generally share on the weekends <laughs> if I can stick to my schedule. I know most of you are in report writing mode at the moment, so don't forget I do have videos on report writing. Check them out in the playlists if you want to see my tips on that. So moving into it today. I'm going to, I think I'll start with, I guess, how I do this. So when I am looking at past and present as a focus with my students, obviously you're guided by a key inquiry question. Um, you know, this is how we work with our syllabus and the key inquiry questions that we've got written into our syllabus as well. You don't need to strictly adhere to those. I mean, you may have children that have language needs. You need to modify some of that language. You might need to enhance some of the, their vocabulary understanding before being able to do that. So <clears throat> don't limit yourself by necessarily sticking to exactly that question. However, we should be driven by that question and be fo focusing on that inquiry learning model as we go through um, this learning process. And a lot of people might stick to a term or a semester when they're doing this, but ideally we want kids to be making those connections anytime, home, here, even when you're studying geography, you know, doing those sorts of things. So I try and connect it to the kids' local environment, uh, look at the history of the local environment, um, you know, your surrounding suburbs, things like that. You might be in a newer suburb that doesn't have much, so you might need to go with your wider region. But luckily, the school that I teach at does have some history in it. Um, and the school itself has history in it. So unless you have a, a very new school, chances are you're going to be able to wander the school and find evidence of history in your school. And that's what I did with uh, my class a couple of years ago. And it was interesting, some of the history we found around the school. So um, I'm not going to show you the pictures because it will like, obviously very specifically identify where I'm from. Um, and there are pictures of the kids in it as well. So I'm looking at it now. And things that we found were old chalkboards in storerooms. We found um, memorabilia, memorabilia signs, uh, teachers or students that had passed away. We found dedication signs. We found really old signage that was obviously old because it was cracked or broken or very dated, depending on the, um, the, the style of the sign as well. We found um, different styles in the architecture. So some of the drainage systems, the kids found a pipe on the playground that had been um, bashed down because it couldn't be used anymore. Uh, so the, the pipe itself was still there, but the end of it was kind of cut off and bashed down. And that led to a really good discussion with our GA about why and when um, that had happened. And it had happened, um, you know, long before and it was just broken and they couldn't remove the whole thing. So that's evidence of some stuff that was there before. Um, the kids would identify things like the new play equipment and uh, paintings and the new sandpit um, as present and then realizing those things were older. They also made the identification that a lot of these things that were older all had a similar theme. Um, we also have like old ovens in the school. There is a new oven, old oven, comparing those and the old original school bell, which traditionally comes out to ring when year six graduate at the end of the year. It only comes out once a year. So we went and looked at the arch that it hangs on uh, normally. And then we went and found the bell and where it's stored. And we talked about how old it was and why it looked old. Um, and why we continue that tradition with our year sixes connecting our past with our present. Um, kids are really excited when it's something that's 
in their space. They can see it every day. They can talk about it. And you would hear them talking about it on the playground and things like that. Um, when you get to memorials and things, there's always talks about ghosts and things like that. And, you know, as a teacher, that's up to you how you decide to deal with that. I just go with, no, there's no ghosts. Don't be silly. Um, regardless of what you personally believe about the afterlife. <laughs> Moving on. So then I try and bring that into the wider aspect of where we live. So in my context, we're looking in Australia, our, you know, our, our best architectural history starts in Sydney. So I like to focus on Sydney because it's a place that has grown and evolved and there's still evidence of that older stuff that's there in our buildings. It's something that the kids can physically relate to. So uh, for those of you that might be watching and thinking, hang on a second, you should be going back into our um, Aboriginal uh, heritage. We do that. We have an Aboriginal education officer at my school and she is the expert. So I make sure my class has lessons with her so they're getting the right information, accurate information, and it's not just tokenistic and taken from stories. And she is the expert that I tap into when we do that. Um, actually, I should do a video with her because she's just so knowledgeable. So the resources I'm going to share with you guys now uh, based on the things that I do around Sydney and how I do that. So what I'm going to do now is flip the camera around and take some screenshots and show you the things that I'm going to share with you and I'm going to talk about how I so use it. So this first thing here is a Word document and it is all about the Harbour Bridge. So I'm just going to scroll up so you can see the top part. So I just this is stuff that I just found on Google. Um, hopefully these weren't websites where you're supposed to pay for any of them, but I'm not selling them, obviously. I'm just using them in the classroom. So I've tried to put then and now pictures of the Sydney Harbour Bridge so that they could see how things had changed over time. So obviously at the beginning here, we've got, you know, right at the end of the construction pretty much, or the top is almost done and then they've just got to do the road. And you can see in here these old, whoops, the, the older ships, the buildings down here, um, you know, the fact that this is all low across the back. And then if you come down to this picture here, I've really tried to get similar views, but obviously you can't get exactly all the time. And, you know, you can see the difference in the skyline here and different boats coming through. Uh, this next comparison, I really love these ones because this is exactly the same. I love it. So we've got 1932 and then, well, this was taken a few years ago, but let's call it now anyway. So same angle, which is awesome. And you can see the different, I'm just going to zoom out so you can see the differences there. Oh, this is just going to be funny for me now. So let's go to one page. There we go and move down. Here we go. So <clears throat> up, like down here, we've got, you know, Sydney Tower or if you're like me, Centre Point Tower because that's what we used to call it. Up here, obviously not there. And look at this. Look at the difference in the height of these buildings from 1932 to now. The Opera House wasn't there. It is now. And then looking down the bottom here, we've got this large building here that wasn't there before. The road's different to the road there all this here which was the wharf is now I'm, i think that's apartments if i'm remembering what side i'm on properly but look at all these piers here the piers are still there now the buildings just look different so that is such a great picture to make a comparison on and we're specifically talking about you know that physical landscape we're not necessarily talking about what the people are doing or the lifestyles at this point we're just looking at the physical landscape and how that can change this one's really cool too so this is from the perspective of the opera house looking at the harbor bridge and how cool is this like you can see there's the building is still there um you know that angle is still the same we can tell this is the older one though but that's the question that drives you with the kids how do you know that this one here is the older picture and this one here is the newer picture um, or the present, the past and the present. And that's the conversation that you drive with these ones. This one too, I love this picture. Um, just, you can see here, I, it's really cool when you say to the kids, look how old the Harbour Bridge is. It's still exactly the same. It's still the Harbour Bridge. You know, it was so well built. It was so well constructed. It was thought out, you know, and then you can start leading into that conversation about the reasonings of, why was it built? Why did we build the Harbour Bridge? And you can get into that detail if you want to. And ask the kids, what do you think happened to the building? Why isn't it there anymore? What's this? You know, why is this road different to what it was there? And that's all I've got for those pictures. So another resource that I've got to share with you guys if you want to take with it. <clears throat> and again, I just found this for free on Google. It's just a picture of the Harbour Bridge. So this might be 
a simple activity for your kids if you want to create a display and get them to label things totally up to you um, moving into the rocks and if you're ever going on an excursion for past and present the rocks is the place to do it because they can physically be in that place and that's just some random pictures there but this absolute hands down my favorite conversation starter for kids when we're doing past and present because look at the evidence there we've literally got this this um this brick the one color the lights the ledges here <clears throat> excuse me the archways and then down the side here for our more modern building it's painted it's all different colors we've got all these display boxes here it's a square entryway we've got the these fan sort of slots here which i'm assuming are for air conditioning the different little security light at the top here we've got the street lamp down here there's just so much going on with this picture that you can talk about and why this is more modern and this is still older why didn't we paint this one as well why didn't we keep this one the same before and really get into those great conversations now if you go to the rocks you've got to walk down this segment here because we've got the similar kind of thing where we've got these more modern buildings on the side here and the older ones are still here on the um the other side too but um you know you, when you go in there you see you know doorways are slightly smaller back then than what they are now why you want to talk about that why is the balcony made with this wrought iron how come these buildings don't have balconies now uh and and the the road that you're walking on you know you can literally say how old is this road do you think this was newer um this is just another vantage point there where you can see you know this old perspective here looking out to the new city we've got the older buildings at the back here compared with our skyline here and the um the train tracks we've got our older buildings here in comparison with you know crossings and cars and um, you know street lights like look at these things are these new or are these old what can you spot what's been mixed this one's good too because we've got this kind of blend here with these older buildings here over here and then this newer cityscape at the back there so these ones are really really good to use too so another resource I'm also going to pop into this drive for you guys uh, I'm just going into my PDF now uh, <clears throat> excuse me this is just a sample unit from um, what do you call it program builder so it's just a starting point if you have never taught this before that's a good starting point for you I'm also going to drop in for you this is a freebie from teachers pay teachers this is a good way to start so you just get the kids to sort so I had this as a display past and present and they go through you know obviously this one's the older oven cooking <laughs> system and this is our newer one you know girls with their older cl past clothes and present clothes and you just go through this is a very basic thing but it's good for conversation you know what's the older what's the new um, and I'm just gonna scan scroll through to the bottom so you know where this is from so this is from I'm just moving down uh, second grade teaching on teachers pay teachers and I just want to assure you that it is free I'm not trying to palm off something that's not mine this is their store sorry so this is second grade teaching second grade I never pay for resources I always go for the freebies so the one that I got was this one past or present and there is a uh, activity sheet system in this one which is also free um, so I mean head over to their teachers pay teachers store and you'll be able to see the different resources that they've got there for past and present uh, and then the other activity that you might want to do leading from I'm just going to go back now to these uh, pictures that I'm sharing with you guys is transport so the like I mentioned the ships before but I mean you've got the, the cars in this picture here you could stem away and go for you know what kind of cars do you think they were driving then and this is a great opportunity to just jump onto Google which I'm going to do now and type in old cars because if you've got any disengaged learners um, this is something that is likely to grab their attention because it's flashy it's interesting it's different it's unique and we can talk about the different cars and the eras and what do you think was actually being driven in Sydney at the time you know was this the kind of car that everyone was driving around or just maybe people with more money <laughs>
So some other strategies for those kids who might be some uh, have some level of disengagement in learning is toys. Toys and technology. So when you're comparing past and present, a lot of the time we focus on uh, buildings and what people did. But um, if we're going to connect with our kids, we need to think of things that, you know, they have experiences with. Most kids will have experiences with technology or toys of some kind. Even our more impoverished kids, parents have a phone or a device of some kind. Not all. I don't want to, you know, blanket that. Uh, but, you know, they have some experience with that or at least with toys. So if you've got old toys that you had when you were younger, bring them in. Let the kids see them, play with them. If they're masters of the universe, don't do that. Check eBay because you might get good money for those. <laughs> but um, having those things or even things that your grandparents had, uh, if you get together, you know, like a PowerPoint of old toys through time like Punch and Judy or the spinning top or, you know, the older xylophones, things like that, um, those are things that kids will automatically gravitate towards because they want to play with it. Um, even if it's just a picture or a video. Um, one that I really caught the attention of my kids when I was doing technology stuff was a typewriter. So they know what a keyboard looks like now on a, on a computer or what it looks like on the screen of a device. But then when you step back to an electronic typewriter and then even further back to the original typewriter, that clicky sound and everything and just seeing it punch away across and then slide back, that really gets their attention. And they love playing with them. They love it. If you get an old telephone and I used them, I don't know what the name is for those. Dial telephone, I guess. A dial telephone. They love playing with those. Um, our frustration at trying to get a phone number out and they'll just sit there and play with it forever. Something that they can connect with and play with and get hands on with and then generate that conversation around it. How did it change? Why did it change? Who changed it? Those are the conversations that really help them make those connections between past and present. And then they'll extend themselves out and start finding those connections for themselves when they're out in their local environment or traveling or having conversations with their family. Chances are, once you've had that conversation with them, they'll go home and ask their mum and dad, what did you play with when you were little? You know, what, what did nan and, dad and granddad play with when they were little? Um, why haven't some things changed? Like the yo-yo. The yo-yo is still essentially the same design even though it has different contraptions. So now you can get lights on it or they can make sounds on it, but essentially it's still just a rope and piece of plastic that goes up and down. That's it. Um, but other things have changed, you know, significantly. So um, those are some of the things that I do with my kids though when I'm teaching past and present. Like I said, easy to differentiate for your kids. You can really extend this for your, um, your older kids if you want to with those concepts, or you can bring it back down a little bit for those kindy kids and keep those conversations, you know, what interests them, what piques them and what their language level is at. So I hope those are handy. Don't forget, um, have a look at that Teachers Pay Teachers store, not affiliated with me whatsoever. I just like some of the things that they had to share and I was able to get things for free, which is a bonus. And um, I'll leave it there. So I'll put my subscription button down the bottom. Just hover over that, click to subscribe. I'll pop another video at the top there and don't forget, go down to the description to get the Google Drive link and the links to my social media. See you later, guys. Bye.